welcome to Texas Home Channel. Hope everyone's having a blessed day. If you're new here, please click that subscribe button and turn the bell icon on to get notified of every upload. Before we get started with the build cost of this K20A3 turbo setup, um, I did want to say a huge thank you to everyone who helped support this, donated to it. Uh, it really helped. I couldn't have done this without your guys' support and help. Um, and huge shout out to all 1,100 of you that loyally watch pretty much anything I put out. Uh, the views reflect that out of 25,400, 1,100 of you watch pretty much whatever. So greatly appreciate that. Uh, I've been really down wanting to give up and you guys kept pushing me to go through and keep going, especially on this build. So thank you. This is because of you. Now, before you get to hear the price, just know it was worth every penny, and I absolutely love this work truck. It's still a work truck. I still use it as a work truck, and it is very quick, and I daily it, so it's absolutely phenomenal. So, we're going to go ahead and get started. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Okay, I did want to mention I'm not including the detachable steering wheel, racing seats, the Dragon Ball Z headliner, the GPS speedometer for the dash or any of the accessory type stuff, since it is not necessary for the K-Swap. Um, we are talking about just the K-Swap price. We're gonna start with the price of the K20A3. This is completely stock internals. All I did was clean it up, paint it silver, paint the valve cover red. Um, that was $175 after tax. The RX-8 six-speed transmission was $161.62. I'm adding all of this up for you guys, by the way. Um, Collins adapter plate to adapt the RX-8 6-speed to the K20A3 was $1,251.36. The K-Power intake manifold was $592.48. Then the coolant swivel, which goes uh, down where the factory uh, thermostat is, that is from Jack Spania, and it was $49.95. So we got the coolant 90-degree coupler, which is on the back side of the engine back here. That's so that the coolant hose can wrap around all the way over to the radiator, which we are running the factory radiator. So if you haven't watched the video of me case swapping it, it'll probably make more sense if you watched that video. I'll try to link it in the description. So we've got the coolant stainless steel hose, which was $64.94. The coolant gauge, which is inside, is $19.49, is this one right here. It reads 104 degrees as its default, so just keep a note of that. I'll try to link everything in the description. Um, once it goes over 104, it reads really accurate. We've got the oil pressure gauge, which is this one over here, which is at zero now because it's not running. That oil pressure gauge was $32.46. The header wrap back here on the downpipe and the stainless steel line, that was $30.50. Then we have the electronic dump pipe so I can have it uh, rowdy mode and then daily driver mode. That was $44.81. We have the oil feed line which is right there, feeds directly into the turbo. That oil feed line was $25.97. Oil return line kit was $36.79. Oil feed fitting is $11.80. Goes right there on top of the turbo. Then we've got the T-bolt clamps, which I needed some various T-bolt clamps. I included pretty much everything I could. $15.14. The clutch line fitting was $12.98. So we could run the RX-8 adapter kit clutch slave cylinder. And then uh, the, cl the clutch slave line was $26.49. We've got three inch flange, which is the one that connects to the turbo. I will have this stuff linked in the description. Um, that three inch flange was $37.83. Three inch downpipe was $43.18. We've got the throttle, which was $58.71. This is just a B-series throttle, bolts right to that K-Power intake manifold. We've got 90 degree turbo flange, which is the um, one that comes off of the log manifold to turn the turbo. We did have to reinforce those welds, by the way, uh, because they did crack. So keep that in mind as well. The turbo manifold was $106.09. K-Series Universal Harness to adapt it to the truck was a $161.24 from Jack Spania. K-Series Harness, the actual engine harness, 
was $259.79. Some of these prices may vary um, because if you're getting them used, it could be cheaper or more. It just depends. And we've got the coolant filler neck, which is right here. That they have better ones, but this is the one I went with. Uh, I do plan on upgrading it in the future. But that filler neck was $14.55. The Stage 3 RX-8 clutch was $126.17, which that does need replaced. I need a Stage 4 now. The EP3 AC bypass, which is this pulley here, because I don't have AC or power steering on here. The power steering is actually looped, if anyone was wondering. Just ran the hose together, and it seems to be okay. Um, but I do want power steering in the future. That was $72.22 for that. So that AEM wideband right there was $188.52. The K-Pro version 4 ECU under the security plate is $970.83. The custom drive shaft was $421. It had to be custom made. Hose clamps and materials like that was $40.50. I added in all the things I could find our seats for. And then we've got the exhaust work was $325. A local exhaust shop did all of the downpipe um, to the electronic dump. My good friend Chewy welded up that turbo exit flange right there, but the exhaust shop did the rest. And that brings us to a grand total of $5,428 worth of money I spent. Uh, 400 of that was donated through PayPal, and I greatly appreciate each and every one of you who donated what you could. It helped tremendously. Um, now with the freebies, which was the GT35 Turbo from Max Peating Rods, the Turbo Blanket from Jack Spania Racing, that was $24 for the Turbo Blanket. The GT35 was $173. We've got the Fuel Rail from Jack Spania, just a K K20 Fuel Rail with a gauge. And that one was $64.95. The intercooler kit was $258 for a 92 to 95 Civic. Um, and I had to get a blow off valve, which I got a knockoff from Jack Spania for $39. Wastegate for $50. Uh, Chevy intake. This is actually off of a Chevy Avalanche. I just cut it shorter. That came from Jeremy, aka Mexican Jesse. He actually hooked me up with that for free, so it costs nothing. Uh, in freebies. The motor mount bracket you see right there and on the other side was actually made by um, Joe, which is a good friend of mine. It's an informant. He made those so that was absolutely free for me. Huge shout out to Joe for doing that and making me custom blow off valve inserts. So with the grand total from everything with the donations um, and how much they would originally cost if you didn't have a sponsor to hook you up, the grand total would be $6,038.30, which is absolutely crazy. I did not expect there to be that much into this swap, but it runs fantastic. It blows the rear tires off. I also got the diff welded up, but that was free from my friend Chewy as well. Um, I did not include in the price the PLM 4 bar donated by Honda Resource. Um, so huge shout out to them for doing that. Greatly appreciate it. Watson Synthetic also donated uh, AMS oil. So a huge shout out to Watson Synthetic, Jack Spaney Racing, Max Peating Rods, and each and every one of you that believed in me. Um, this sounds like it's too much money for an old junky truck, but I'm telling you this thing turns heads. It is absolutely crazy. It's fun and I enjoy it. It's a work truck that I actually get something out of. And uh, it's great. The Dragon Ball Z themes really come together. Uh, I did put a shorter uh, shifter in here, which I had the long one, but it just was too close to hitting the stereo every time I'd shift a third. So I put the factory shifter back on with a Dragon Ball on it, and it feels fantastic. Also, a fire extinguisher, because I did all the work myself, it's just a good idea to have. Um, got that from Walmart. But yeah, this thing's definitely made a huge improvement since I very first got it. And I just wanted to give you guys a, a walk around. Also, I want to show you my sticker I made. You got a gaptism. Actually, gaptism is a word. In case anyone was wondering, the Urban Dictionary, at least, it's a word. It means to be beaten in an unholy manner. I think it's kind of funny. But, um, yeah, it's definitely made progress. And 
I would say if you were going to do it, you could probably find some better deals than I did. Maybe find a different way to get it all in here and running. But uh, yeah, this is what worked for me. I have the video and all the videos of the process on the channel. So definitely check, um, browse my other videos. I have a playlist made of the K-Swap stuff for this truck specifically. So definitely check that out if you're curious. I didn't mention this, um, but the blower motor and heater stuff, you can still use it. I had to chop it off. Um, this is where the AC stuff was going out, which this truck doesn't have AC here in Texas, but it's fine. I cruised with the windows down. It's okay. It's bearable. Um, I cut all this off. I do plan at some point on fiberglassing all of this and then sanding it down, but that is the only clearance I had, and this is just metal heat reflective tape. Um, so I was still able to keep my heater core, which is more important to me than AC because I hate the cold. I can deal with the heat. That's why I live in Texas. But uh, yeah, it still works. You just have to get creative with it. The hoses that run to the heater core run right out of the turbo. So just wanted to show you guys that. But uh, yeah, got launch control set up in a previous video. And this thing absolutely loves this colder weather, the 60 degree weather here in Texas. It is fantastic. Uh, it pulls really hard. I'm trying to get some money saved up so I can get some new tires. Uh, try to get some wider wheels, but I don't know if that's going to happen anytime soon, but I definitely need some wider tires for sure and some new ones because this thing just spins like crazy, especially with this boost weather. But if anyone was wondering why it's called Kazda, it's the K-Swap Mazda. I thought it would be creative. Some people think it's stupid, but at the end of the day, it is my stupid creation and I absolutely love it. Um, I do have plans on doing it with the green lime green bed liner over the top of this it is a work truck I needed as durable paint as i can you already see one of the kids uh scuffed it up pretty good and then the door was flung open and it chipped off don't have that problem with the bed liner i already have the raptor liner up here the city is just complaining about me doing work out of my garage on my own vehicles so i've got to find a place to do it so i've been trying to find one it's just really difficult i don't have a lot of connections here um or friends for that matter but uh yeah definitely made progress and i greatly appreciate you guys checking in to see how much the build cost was it's been super fun on this um, but i have some more work to do still i'm trying to fine tune things but for a work truck i couldn't be any happier but with all that being said i am super thankful you guys came by and uh, check the links in the description and check my other videos browse around and uh, stay tuned for more because we definitely will have more coming. If God is willing, I will see you guys in the next video. And as I like to say, God bless, stay safe, stay awesome.